Live from KSAT 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning to you. It is Monday, April 1st. Steph is off for her birthday and RJ sticking around for the 9 a.m. show. Yeah, we've been saying it all morning. This is not an April Fool's joke. Yes, I am stepping in for Stephanie. Happy birthday to Stephanie taking a well-deserved day off. She was at the Spurs game last night. Unfortunately, didn't get the win, but yeah. um, it was a good game, so I'm sure she had a great time. I'm sure she time. did. Celebrating her 27th, 28th birthday. It's <laughs> it's truly amazing, Steph. And we are yeah. thinking about you today. Absolutely. Love to see you again here tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cannot wait. Uh, but morning, a little bit muggy, Justin, a little bit murky out yeah. there, all misty. Any other M you want to? <laughs> no, I think you pretty much covered it. And, yeah. and we may get some fireworks for Steph's birthday, too. Uh -huh. Some little fireworks by this evening with some storms <laughs> popping up. Happy birthday, Steph, by the way. Uh, we're going to start with some headlines here. Cloudy, yes, murky, foggy this morning, a lot of humidity. And here's some of the headlines that we're watching. Temps may soar above 90 degrees today. I think we'll be right there at that mark here in San Antonio, but some triple digits possible for parts of our area this afternoon, if you can believe that. Then we watch for some severe storms this evening. It's not going to be terribly widespread, but I think we could see one or two strong storms, some of which could contain some large hail. So we're going to talk about that forecast. And then a lot of ups and downs past that. We get some drier air, so that means some cool mornings, warm afternoons. And then some more volatile weather as we head towards the weekend. Uh, here's a look at some of those high temperatures today. Yeah, Carrizo Springs, 103 potentially, 100 in Pearsall. We're going 90 in San Antonio, but it is going to be a very warm and somewhat humid afternoon, which again is going to lead to that chance for storms. So here's what it looks like geographically where we could see some of the uh, bigger storms. And that's honestly going to be up across parts of Dallas, Oklahoma City, Tulsa, parts of Oklahoma. But even down here on the tail end of things, I think we could see a couple strong storms. This is going to be between 8 p.m. and midnight. Uh, we're going to talk much more about this, the threats, the rest of the week. We've also got some, some of the first signs of our eclipse forecast coming in. Uh, more on that here in just a bit, guys. All right, Justin, we're going to take a quick check of traffic here and show you some trans guide traffic cameras and things looking pretty good for the most part. Obviously, some people dealt with some slick road conditions earlier. A little bit of a, we mentioned that fog and mist in the area. Good news is that we have cleared out a couple of major wrecks that we saw earlier this morning as a back up a little bit here. So we had a couple of crashes southbound lanes of 35 at Judson Topper Wine. Those have both cleared out uh, northbound lanes, though, I-35 at Wiener Road. We still have that crash there back in some traffic up to the Walsham Road road area. Let's take you now to the south and southeast side. We have a stalled vehicle 35 southbound at Southwest Military. You see that on the left hand of your screen and on the bottom right hand corner you do see a stalled vehicle 410 at Roosevelt and Bandera. So a couple different things to keep in mind if you are about to hit the roads. Part Thank you RJ. Here's today's 9 at 9. Efforts continue this morning to clear the collapsed Francis Scott Key Bridge and reopen the Baltimore port. Officials say six construction workers were killed with the bodies of two of the victims recovered and four still missing, presumably trapped in the tangle of steel underwater. The captain of the port has announced plans for a temporary alternative shipping route to allow cargo ships to safely circumnavigate the blockage. Eight people between the ages of 12 and 17 were injured when gunfire erupted outside a mall over the weekend in downtown Indianapolis. This is the third consecutive weekend that city police have responded to a mass shooting. The violence occurred despite more than 25 officers patrolling downtown Indianapolis as part of a scaled up police presence to control juveniles in the area during the evening hours. Investigators believe that there was more than one gun used in the shooting, no arrests were made, and police do not have any suspects. One person is dead, four others are injured after a shooting at a coffee shop on Sunday in Nashville, Tennessee. It happened during Easter brunch. Five people were hit by the gunfire. Police are now looking for the person responsible. Right now it's unclear what motivated the shooting. Former lawyer Alex Murdaugh is expected to be sentenced today by a federal judge in South Carolina for nearly two dozen financial crimes he admits that he committed. Murdaugh is already serving two life sentences for the murders of his wife and son. He pleaded guilty last September to 22 federal charges that included wire and bank fraud. The 55-year-old admits that he stole money from his clients and law firm and used it for his own personal use. 
AT&T says it's investigating how information from 73 million customers got onto the dark web after the massive data breach announced over the weekend. It now says it's notifying those affected. The breach appears to involve data from 2019 or earlier. If you think you've been hacked, experts say to reset your password, ask for a credit reporting agency to put a fraud alert on your account, or consider a credit freeze to block someone from opening a credit account in your name. California's fast food workers will get a minimum wage hike today. They will receive a $4 increase from $16 an hour to $20, meaning some will make 25% more on their paychecks. Advocates say it's about time given the high cost of living and inflation. The new law only affects fast food chains with at least 60 locations nationwide. Gmail turns 20 today. Google's email service started with what many thought was a joke, announcing a search-based webmail service it now has an estimated 1.2 billion users. Gmail is marking the occasion by instituting new security measures. Well, this is not an April Fool's joke. Free Krispy Kreme today, the chain giving away donuts and discounts for April Fool's Day. And in case you missed it, Krispy Kremes are coming to McDonald's restaurants. The move is expected to go nationwide by the end of 2026. Nobody wants Saturday night's Powerball drawing, sending the jackpot to nearly $1 billion in time for this April Fool's Day. No joke. Tonight's drawing is estimated to win someone $975 million, cash value $471 million. While no one won the big jackpot Saturday night, at least four people matched numbers to win $1 million, but no one in Texas. Saturday marked 38 consecutive drawings without a jackpot winner. Good luck. And that's today's Nine at Night. Andy Morning Headlines right out of a sci-fi movie, The Attack of the Saw Blade. Yikes. Gotta see this to believe it. And cruise ship passengers left stranded on a remote island. Yeah, that's like a Final Destination uh, mm -hmm. movie right there. Also, watch out for fake eclipse glasses. David Sears is with us here to talk more about that. That's a scary oh, thought. Yeah. Why is there always gotta be some numb nut taking advantage of some major event all the time? Every single time we gotta deal with some guy or some girl, somebody trying to take advantage. Knucklehead. You said that's a mouthful, Dave. <laughs> Sit right. back and enjoy it. Just yes, watch sir. the eclipse. Oh. I know, right? We'll talk about that in a second. First, let's talk about this. Talk about a close call. Man walking into the store right there. Look at, watch this parking lot right here. Watch what happens. Zip! That is a huge saw blade coming right at the store embeds into the wall of the store. Here it is again, another look at it for you. That guy just barely got in the door before that saw blade got to the store. Here's what it looked like from inside the store when the blade hit. You can see there it is, the blade embedded in that wall by about two feet. The guy who just got into the store, Shane Rimke, you can imagine his reaction. So I was walking into the store here, I put my handle on the door and uh, I heard a loud bang and yelling over here at the corner just as a cloud of smoke pops up and I see a guy fall into the ditch and a four-foot blade hurling at me <laughs> as I'm walking through the doorway. Uh, oh my god, I've I, 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 tears all night. Like, yeah, it, was, it, was, it was touchifying. I was, sh I was shaking in the store. It kicked me a little bit before I could talk. I mean, obviously it wasn't my time, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was probably the closest I've ever experienced it. Closest you ever want to experience it, too. There were several crews across the parking lot working on a gas line. The local gas company says contractor was responsible and they are no longer on site while there is an investigation going on. Talk about a sinking feeling when you left behind your, by your cruise ship. It happened to a couple from South Carolina, Jill and Jay Campbell, along with several others in their group. They were stranded on a small island off the coast of Africa. Their Norwegian ship left without them and seven others. Their tour operator contacted the captain let them know that they were running late but were on their way. When they got to the port, the ship was still anchored, but the captain would not let them board. According to Jill, the harbor master tried to call the ship. The captain would not take the call. They tried the emergency number, but that said, oh, you got to send an email. Well, that didn't work. So nine passengers were left stranded. Four were elderly, one with a heart condition, another in a wheelchair. Nobody had any belongings or credit cards or anything, basically nothing. Jill was actually the only one with a credit card, so she paid food and hotels and essentials worth about $5,000 for the entire group. Oh, I don't know where the whole group would be without her strength, guidance, I'm, I'm honored and blessed. I have the smartest woman in the world next to me. 
All right, the embassy in Angola is trying to help, so they're still stuck there. They can only get to the cruise ship and get on the ship if the cruise line approves it. Nothing from Norwegian cruise lines as of yet. And you knew this was going to happen. Fake solar eclipse glasses are hitting the market, so here's how you can tell if your glasses are real or not. The ones on the top are not real. The ones on the bottom are real because they have the reflective lens in them. So you have to look really close when you go and buy your glasses. There's also some, like these edges are different right here and these edges are different right there. So there is a way where you can tell, you can actually get on a website and find out if your glasses are real. The, counter ones, the counterfeit ones, you know, they'll, they'll show up. But just be very careful. But here's the website. Let's see if we can scroll down and tell me where they're, they're American Astronomical Society's website. I'll tell you which ones. Or what you do is you make sure that you get some KSAT Weather Authority glasses. Here they are right here. Get some of these and you know they're authentic. You know they're really to go. I'm going to show that picture. Where? <laughs> where here we go. I was going to show them. See, there they are right there. There they are. Where are where's the camera? Here. Those are official. Come back to this camera. Justin right Horn went all the way back. Right, to, yes. just all, to my, right all the way back. Let's see right here. You know what makes them official? It says right there. Weather authority. Right. So you know these are the good glasses. So I don't know. I think the weather department's still giving these away, right, Justin? That's right. All right. So that, this week. Got some giveaways this week. So get some of these. You don't have to worry about any of those fake ones. See how that works? Why, why would they even, I mean, I don't know. Why, I, I don't know why that stuff has to be. I, I assume it's possible the government could step in and to kind of take them off the market wherever they can find them. But we're short on time good here. Good luck yeah. finding them. You yeah. got a week yeah. to do it. So, yeah. But just make sure they say weather authority and you're good. All right. There you go. Make it easier. Fast up again. your career as a hand model, David Sears. Thank you, well, you, know. Thank you very much. Right now, 909, <laughs> 71 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA at 9. Yeah, David is a man of many talents. All right. We are just one week away from the total solar eclipse, and there's a lot of excitement surrounding the event, especially from our weather team right here at KSAT 12. After the break, standing right next to me here, off to my left, the one and only Justin Horn will tell you how scientists determined the eclipse path. I've taken plenty of math classes in my day, but when it comes to figuring out where and when a total solar eclipse will occur, that's next level math. Thankfully, there are some really smart people here at UTSA, including Dr. Angela Speck, who heads up the Department of Physics and Astronomy. She's gonna help us out. Let's go do some learning. Determining the path of an eclipse, how difficult is that? The silence says it all. I mean, Dr. Speck is an astrophysicist, but as she'll tell you, there's a lot, and I mean a lot to consider. We can simplify the players, the sun, the moon, and the earth, obviously, but that's where the simplicity ends. The moon isn't always in between us and the sun, and so you get kind of a, a, weird, a weird sort of mismatch of when they do intersect, where, where is it gonna hit on the earth? So is this geometry that we're yeah, doing with Yeah, this there? is all geometry. Okay. So to figure out this problem, you should probably know that the distance from the Earth to the Sun is one astronomical unit, or AU, or roughly 93 million miles. This is about uh, one four hundredth of an AU. And so you can then start to figure out, okay, what is, what is this? And so you end up with, um, you know, how big is this and where does it land on the Earth? Get all that? I think we're gonna need a bigger calculator. Here's the good news. So once you've worked out one, you can start to predict when they will be in the future and when they will be in the past. But this is also when it gets even more complicated. Keep in mind things are spinning, wobbling, and orbiting. You're gonna get all of the different cycles of the moon going around the Earth and the Earth going around the sun. They all come together every 18 years, 11 days, and eight hours. That's very specific. It's also got a name, the Cero cycle. And as it turns out, that extra eight hours throws things off. So we just had an eclipse, uh, an annual eclipse. And if you've seen the path of that, you've got an annual eclipse, you've got the total eclipse, you've got this lovely cross. Right. There was a cross like that, 18 years and five days, uh, 11 days ago. But because of the eight hours, it's not over San Antonio. It's a third of the way around the planet because that's a third of a day. And so it was in North Africa. It was Libya. In other words, we're lucky. For as complicated as the math seems to be, the equations are working in favor of us Earthlings. We have a moon that is exactly the right size and distance from us, so it looks the same size as the sun in the sky. It's much closer, mm -hmm. so, it's, so it looks much bigger. So the adage, what a time to be alive, has never been more true. Okay. And in the future, 
the moon will be too far away and we'll only get annular eclipses. So we're really lucky to be exactly. living in San Antonio right now. Great story, wow. Justin. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> Great that was all above my head. It, <laughs> <laughs> Very smart people are behind this. Yeah. But uh, I think one thing that's really cool is they get so specific with the track, and you've, you've probably seen this if you've been on our interactive mm -hmm. map. Uh, there's streets like Wetmore, for instance. Mm -hmm. On one side of Wetmore, you'll have 99.9% .9 totality. On the other side, if you were to cross the street, you have complete totality. And there is a difference. It, it, there is a, a big difference. So it's down the street level that they can figure this math out and know where this the eclipse is going to go. Did you tell us that this expert was also mind blown. on Good Morning America? Yes, Dr. Angela yeah. Specks, who was on Good Morning America yesterday. So nice. She's over at UTSA. they got a mm -hmm. lot of smart people over at UTSA working on this eclipse stuff. So, yes, uh, a lot going on, and we're a week away. Mm -hmm. A week away. We're still hoping for good weather. Man, I hope. Well, you guys <laughs> did a great job. Uh, photojournalist Azian Bermay also yep. working with you on that. Yeah. yeah that he, looked uh, really good. some we'll, good animations. Way to break it down. Yeah, yeah we tried. Sure. It's, it's a lot, but we mm -hmm. tried to break it down a little bit. Y'all did great. Thank you. And uh, as we break down today's forecast, guys, we got to talk a little bit about storm potential this afternoon. Yeah. There is a threat for that. And a lot of humidity out there. You can see the humidity on our live cam here. A lot of clouds, some fog and drizzle out there. 71 at the airport, 73 New Braunfels. we got 60s in places like Bernie and Kerrville and a good southerly and southeasterly wind ushering in all that moisture. Let me show you the big picture here, and you can see where the rain is right now. We've got showers lining up across parts of the Texas Panhandle. Oklahoma, you got snow on the north side of this, some snow around the higher elevations there in Albuquerque. This is the storm system starting to approach. Now, as it evolves today, most of the severe weather is going to be to our north, but uh, there's going to be a tail end of things that comes all the way down to San Antonio, a kind of a broken line. And I think between 8 p.m. and midnight, uh, that's when we could see some storms here. So if you're looking at it on a scale of one to five, this light yellow is a one. Darker yellow is a two. So that's where the higher risk is in this region here for some strong storms. Again, the window is pretty small, but it is there. So let's look at the computer model. I'm going to fast forward all the way to 8 o'clock, and that's when I think things start to kind of get underway. And then you'll start to see storms developing along that boundary. And this is where we could see a few strong storms through about midnight, and then these start to scoot east. And then by tomorrow morning, we're clearing out. What are the main threats with these storms as they develop this evening? Uh, well, I think it's going to be hail uh, just based on uh, the situation that we have in the atmosphere. So that's going to be our highest risk. Uh, certainly some gusty winds with the stronger storms. Flooding, tornadoes, uh, a much, much lower risk. I don't think we're going to get a lot of rain out of this. So hour by hour, 78 at noontime, still cloudy. We'll start to see a few peaks of sun early afternoon. And then look at the temperatures. They shoot up close to 90. So there will be some energy in the atmosphere for these storms to work with, heat and humidity. And then we start to bring the rain chances up. So by 8 o'clock, we put in a 40% chance of storms. That continues through about midnight, as I said. Then uh, we'll watch for the dew point to fall off. So it'll be very, very humid today. And then humidity levels really drop off as we get into Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. That does a couple of things. Allows for some chilly mornings then some warm afternoons. And then by the weekend, we start to see the dew point building back, and that will lead to another chance of rain. So let me show the extended forecast here. We're going to go 90 today, 40% chance of storms this evening, 80 tomorrow, so about a 10-degree drop-off behind this front. It will be a little bit windy. And look at the low Wednesday morning, 49. We're down to 48 Thursday morning, so some great weather midweek. And then by the weekend, things start to get a little more complicated. We get Moisture back in here, some drizzle, I think, Saturday morning, and then a chance for some showers and storms on Sunday. And, of course, the big question is Monday for the eclipse. At the moment, it's not looking great. Some clouds, perhaps, maybe a little bit of rain. But things can change. We're still seven days out, and models are notorious for kind of switching things up this far out. So we're going to stay positive. Positive thoughts. Positive vibes. Uh, hopefully we get some breaks <laughs> in the clouds and the, we, we can all see the eclipse very clearly. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, Justin. Right now we're 920, 71 degrees. All right. We're going to tell you how one local nonprofit who provides guidance for parents with children who have special needs is also changing lives. Welcome back. 923. Since 1982, a local nonprofit has been providing guidance for families of children and youth with special needs. This month, the organization is getting ready for their 20th annual Walk for Autism. The case at Tiffany Huerta shares how any baby can of San Antonio has been changing lives. 
so strong-willed. She's funny. And eight-year-old Aaliyah Flores loves to explore. She used to like play by herself, um, but now she is like wanting to engage in others. Marlo and Johnny Flores tell us about their daughter's journey. She did not have a lot of eye contact, not a lot of facial expressions. Aaliyah was diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder when she was 20 months old. The Flores family is thankful for the nonprofit Any Baby Can of San Antonio that helped them navigate autism. They immediately set me up with a case manager. The case manager came to our house. Um, I remember her bringing this big binder like, you're going to need this for life. And I mean, she was right. The nonprofit offers a broad range of services from case managers who help link families to local and state programs to autism services. They gave us classes to attend. I mean, from like ABA, like what is ABA therapy, like applied behavioral analysis therapy um, to potty training strategies. They welcome you with your arms open. Every year, the Flotus family comes together in April for Any Baby Can's Walk for Autism to get back to the organization that changed their lives. We have shirts, we wear tutus. Um, Aaliyah is the star of our show. <laughs> The 20th annual Walk for Autism is taking place on April 20th at Palo Alto College. There will be resources from a variety of organizations, businesses, and service providers. Aliyah's family is excited for the event. It means the world to us. We have an autistic grandchild and she has really immersed in this. I mean, she, it's so heartwarming to have an organization that supports them. Aliyah's mom has a message to her daughter. Not to give up. Um, she has a strong family support system. We're going to love, we love her, and we're just going to keep pushing forward to the, be the best that she can be. Tiffany Huertas, KSET 12 News. KSAT community is excited to partner with the nonprofit Any Baby Can to help raise awareness and promote acceptance. We'll have a live stream town hall, Understanding Autism, hosted by Tiffany Huertas on Tuesday, April 16th at 2 p.m. Yeah, I'm sure we can get a lot of good information mm -hmm. there. Saturday, April 20th, there will also be the Any Baby Can Walk for Autism at Palo Alto College. The day will be filled with activities for everyone, including a sensory-friendly zone. Resources from over 100 different autism family and healthcare organizations will also be available. We will be right back. Bear County residents taking action in their own backyards after the largest wildfire in Texas history. Yeah, you may remember those devastating videos showing all that devastation there in that part of the country. It's been two weeks since the Texas A&M Forest Service reported the Smokehouse Creek fire in the Panhandle had been completely contained. As Avery Everett shows us, some people back here in San Antonio are using this as a warning sign to limit their chances of being next and pushing native plants as people start to grow their summer gardens. With a forest this full, Charlie Lewis says it's hard not to think what a wildfire could do here. It's a prime uh, fuel for wildfire. He lives in the Cibolo Canyons community, and in this part of North Bear County, there's an abundance of trees and brush. This area is, has yet to be cut, but it's on the list. Yes. Their concern is that if a wildfire happened here, it could easily spread, but that soon could change with the FireWise community. Neighborhoods can uh, take control of uh, their communities and make them fire safe. The FireWise USA program gives people the tools to minimize the spread of potential wildfires. You can do these wildfire prevention efforts in your own backyard. The Texas A&M Forest Service splits this space into three different zones. The first one is the immediate zone right by your house. They ask that you keep your roof and gutters clean and that if you have any damaged shingles, that you make sure that they are replaced. The second zone is this intermediate space. That's where we're standing right now. It's anywhere from five feet to 30 feet away from your house. In this space, they ask that you keep your grass cut pretty low and that if you're planning on planting any trees or shrubs, that you spread them out. The third and final zone is the extended zone, and this could be pretty expansive. They ask that you keep an eye out for any debris or dead tree material, and that's what those FireWise communities say they're trying to tackle. The idea of creating these zones uh, is to slow down the wildfire, to give the fire department a chance to get ahead of the wildfire. And while this FireWise community has been around for a couple of seasons, their new focus this spring is saving native plants. And preserving the forest, by getting rid of fuel for wildfire, we also want to promote and protect the good in the forest. They say many native plants have adapted to fires, and they also say they're essential to a healthy forest. They've created a list 
and labeled them too. Cedar elm tree, a gum bully shrub, never heard of that actually. This is just one neighborhood now, but they're looking to take their efforts across the county. It matters everywhere. Hoping Bear County can be better prepared if a wildfire breaks out. We have other tips that you can take on your own home for wildfire prevention already listed out on KSAT.com. Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. All right, taking a quick look at live cam and we're seeing a little bit of uh, haze out there. A little bit foggy, misty, all of the above. Justin Horn, how are things looking outside right now? Yeah, just a perfect example showing how much moisture has come into South Texas out ahead of our next storm system. So it's going to be really muggy, especially first half of the day. And then as we head toward the afternoon, some of that moisture may get lifted into some showers and storms. Let me show you the big picture here and you can see where the rain is at the moment across parts of the Texas Panhandle, Oklahoma, some snow in the higher elevations of New Mexico. That is that dynamic system that will be rolling through today and helping to generate some storms even here across South Texas. Look at the difference in temperatures. 101 in Laredo today, 67 in Amarillo. That's the difference. This is one of those spring like storms that brings a little bit of everything to Texas. And as we look at the severe weather outlook today, as that front pushes a little bit closer to San Antonio, yes, we will be on the tail end of things, but there is a threat for a few strong storms, especially San Antonio and points northeast as this front comes in. And we think that'll be mainly between 8 p.m. and midnight tonight. We're going to talk much more about the storm threat uh, coming up here in just a few minutes. But let's talk uh, traffic now. Thank you, Justin. Let's take a look out there right now. No accidents to speak of right now. Fairly light traffic at 90 in Medio Creek. We've got a couple of stall vehicles here or there, but don't see any of them on these trans guide cameras at the moment. Well, David and RJ are here to give us a recap. Uh, we're going to talk Spurs. We're going to talk Brahmas and I can't leave out March Madness. Good morning again, guys. <laughs> Whew, what a big a weekend. Going on. A lot Man. going on. We just Sitting on the couch? No, I had, yeah, well, oh. in between games, I'm mowing the yard, I'm raking this. My wife and I are doing cleaning up that in the yard. Good. Just like run in, watch a little yeah. basketball, then run back out and do a little more yard work. So, you know, we got it all done. We're good. We're good. Yes. Saw a lot of basketball, though. Yeah, I don't even have any stat sheets because, you know, it's all like it's, up here, but it's just, it's <laughs> jumping. So, well, we'll get through it here. So what okay. are we going to start with Spurs? Uh, we're going to talk Spurs Woo. here. Spurs uh -oh. versus the Golden State Warriors. Did they you have, did three they straight wins coming into this one? Yeah, did you see him throw one like up to the rafters? and he swished it he's walking off the court i did like not see that uh, but, yeah uh, i don't know if that was last night or if it was some other time but it's like shooter. that guy's amazing oh that's amazing too <laughs> gotta love that yeah first time in the season that they actually were coming into a game with a three game winning streak that's right and uh this game here no keldon no Sohan and no Devin Vassell again. So this was basically the, the Wemby and Friends show. As you saw, we had a Mamu sighting. A Mamu sighting yeah. right there. What worries yeah. me is is like all three of those guys had like ankle problems. What, what's going on? Or two of them did. Two of the guys okay. said another they got some sore ankles. What are they doing? Interesting. I mean, you know, they don't have the John Lucas Hill out by Trinity anymore. <laughs> do you remember that? I don't, all but I do get the reference. That. Yes, Mark John might remember Lucas that. Old coach. John Lucas. I think I heard it. Is that huh? named after yeah. the coach, John the Lucas? Hill. Mm -hmm. No, yeah, but they had, remember, we'll have, well, <laughs> okay. Spur fans will remember. When they trained over at Trinity, uh, they had a, they had this even uh, a twinkle huge, in his parents' eyes. Yeah. <laughs> Is it kind of like a Hell Week training there? Yeah, kind of. Okay, gotcha. Kind of like it was, but John Lucas made him run up mm -hmm. down his hill, but they built it. Maybe like they're doing tall, some work anyway. out there. All right, back to the highlights. Yeah, David, Victor Wembanyama, you know what? He did, he did some good work here. 32 yeah. points, 12 rebounds, uh, but again, the Steph Curry too much here down the stretch. That was Clay Thompson, as a matter of fact. I think Steph finished with 33 points. So uh, Wimby was all right, but his friends didn't help him yeah, out much. That's what you're telling Chitty me. Chetty Osmond yeah. had himself a nice it, game, it, but uh, yeah. Did you notice last night that he's, that Wimby was running a lot of point? He was uh, bringing the ball up and dribbling around and trying yeah. to pass it around. Yeah. And then getting double teamed, but I mean, it seemed like it's like wow. What well, I mean, this is a point guard on the team now? This okay. this felt very much like a you know what? Let's just play hard, try yeah. hard, but do not win this game because again, the Spurs are still <laughs> no, in the good. bottom three. Still gives them the best chance to uh, to get the top get pick in next year's draft, which. You know, yeah. I mean, no Wemby this year, but, you know, it is yeah. the top pick. Yeah. 18 and 57, so what's that leave? Uh, eight, uh, I can't do the math. At least seven <laughs> games, right? Eight games? Seven games left. Seven and Wemby right. is now eligible for Defensive Player of the Year. And that's all we wanted. on the all-defensive. Yes. So that yes. means we're probably we not going to see a lot of him for the rest well, of the season, number one, that, number two. Although he is $25,000 lighter, like 
like he probably carries that in his pocket. So you know, much yeah, more to see so, it. So, uh, but it okay, was this he act. had this. On okay, Friday, uh, Friday okay. night, great game here. Victor Wembanyama goes for 40-20. Jalen Brunson goes for 61 points for Ooh. the Knicks. Spurs winning overtime game, and I guess uh, it's just going to be the still shot yeah. here of, Vic, of uh, Wemby before he chunked the ball uh, into yeah. the. Uh, I, I guess we're going to have to maybe yeah. imitate it, imitate, recreate yeah. it. That was a good chunk, though. <laughs> what, did it? he do it left handed or right handed? I think he did it left handed. He, he, yeah. he chunked the ball in the stands. He's gets fined $25,000. Yeah. Yes. They ask Wemby, are you going to pay that? And he goes, nah, somebody else is going to pay that. <laughs> And I think he said something to the effect like, okay, bad for Jalen Brunson, but good for that fan who caught the ball. Yeah. I think yeah. they even showed the fan like with the ball after the game. And there's a shot of Brunson yeah. giving Wimby the death stare after right. yeah. the ball. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, if you want to go up and take it away from the fan, go right ahead. <laughs> good luck with that. All right. Yeah. Okay. Moving on so here. So what's left? What do we have left here? Okay, let's go. Okay, final four. March Madness. We just getting started. Under bracket, David. Uh, I, this is why I didn't fill out a bracket. This is exactly why I don't do it because there's no yes. reason to. Yeah. Unless, I mean, okay, we've got two number ones right there, mm -hmm. a UConn and a Purdue, but a lot of people don't think number ones are, you know, all going to be in it. Mm -hmm. North Carolina State, the 11, they're the, they're the, uh, they're not a Cinderella. They'll tell you they're not a Cinderella, but remember they won five in a row mm -hmm. just in their conference championship to get to the NCAA tournament. Yep. And now they, what is that, four that they've won in a row? So they've won like mm -hmm. nine in a row. Mm -hmm. And they're, they got that big guy, Davis, dude, he just, he just bulls his way to the, he's a bull in a tiny shop, that guy. Uh, I mean, but speaking he's, of big he's guys. He's got a touch. Yeah. He's got uh, a touch. Purdue, for, first of all, when I think of NC State, I think of Jimmy V, this yep. first Final Four since yep. 1983, the Jimmy V Valvano uh, uh, Wolfpack there that won the national title. For What's interesting about down. Purdue and about UConn, they both have guys that are like seven. The center's coming back. Yeah. The center's yeah. are now dominating the mm -hmm. series. I mean, this kid for Purdue, how many? He like shot like, I don't yeah, know, 105 free yesterday. throws. <laughs> it was like it was like felt like it. It yeah. felt like it. Was it you? Yeah, was it? Yeah, it was yeah. The, yeah, he said how many? Twenty two. Yes. Twenty two free throws. To beat he Tennessee. Yeah. And he, and he didn't commit one foul. Uh, and the kid's like over seven foot, plays center, doesn't commit a foul, but he shot twenty two free throws. Yeah. Like yeah. all right, got you Zach there. Eady. Alabama got a name, got a kid named Sears on their team who can oh, flat out boy. shoot it. <laughs> yeah, Mike Sears, or is it Mike or Mark? Mike or Mark, I forget. But his last name is Sears, so that's all I That's all that matters that's, there, yeah. It's kind and of fun uh, of course, to listen to, um, listen to your name be called all the time. Uh, there goes Sears with another ahead. bucket. <laughs> Sears with like, You know what? Uh, let's, we're just going to move ahead here. All right, the Brahmas, uh, they kicked off. The I, Do you want to call it the inaugural UFL season? It is the UFL, I'm, but the yeah, second season of the Brahmas are here. Remember, they were the XFL last year. Now the UFL. Hey, they had a good crowd in there last they night. Did. I mean, they did. They had like 13,000 yeah. people on Easter Sunday and NCAA Tournament Sunday. That's mm -hmm. great. See those people show up. And then they, they went out and performed. Yeah, they did. Uh, Chase Garbers, David, was our starting quarterback. So that's a name probably to, to learn as the season goes on. This was a fake punt that turned into a 40-yard touchdown pass to the big guy. What are your thoughts on big man touchdowns? I, I like big man touchdowns. <laughs> it's the year of the you big know? man. We got the big guys from NC State. Well, we got you get big guys and you know they got good footwork so yeah. let's let's go with it <laughs> and look at the the team's got to chase him down like to celebrate yeah. so I, I, you got to celebrate nice the big man touchdown I, I think after the game he said that that was not supposed to go to him that the play was not designed but the punter said you know what i'm gonna throw it to this guy two very oh, Easter sorry, sunday treat two very interesting things i noticed about the game well probably one big thing was these guys are all a lot of them are mic'd so you can hear yeah. them yeah and then even the Dan Bongino, you might recognize that name. He's the guy, he's the Bondino. referee. Bondino, he's a re Bondino. referee yeah, in, yeah, the, yeah. in the booth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's mic'd. So he's talking to the referee on the field who's mic'd. So they're discussing, you know, penalties and all this kind of stuff. So it's very yeah. interesting. Now if we could just get the announcers to shut up while these guys are talking. so Because I, I, I know what the announcers are going to say. I want to hear what these guys are saying. Right. So that's the next step. You guys be quiet while the referees and, and the guys yeah. are talking and the coaches are talking and the players yeah. are talking so I, so I can listen. I mean, why mic them it's if really, we can't hear? It's really interesting so. to hear that. In fact, they, they took away a touchdown from yeah. D.C. that would have made the game close. And you heard Blandino and the ref on the field kind of going back and yeah. forth mm -hmm. on – what exactly happened. So it's a good way to, I guess, get the fan to understand what's happening on the field. If you're at the game, you're probably like, what? What just what's happening? going on? But they got a camera in the booth where Blandino, 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 Blandino. 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 Yeah. 
Yeah. Anyway, we're, they got a, they got a camera in the booth where he is, so you can see him actually looking at at replays and yeah. backing them up and it's going like reversing. So, it. Yeah. So it's yeah. it's very interesting. It but is. we just got to get the announcers to like be quiet. It's fun to watch. It really is. Going on. All right. So a win for the Bravos. Bramas, there guys. Go. Thank you. Forward. 941, 71 degrees. You're watching GMSA nine. If up next, if you're looking to save some cash this month, we have a look at April's deals from cookware, home improvement supplies, even air conditioners. If you're looking for cookware, home improvement supplies, or even air conditioners, you're in luck. Those are just a few of the categories and items expected to be discounted in April. That's according to Deal News, which says cookware often tends to get marked down in the month thanks to the upcoming wedding and graduation seasons. It recommends checking retailers like Sur La Table for bargains. And with warmer weather, there's a pickup and do-it-yourself projects around the house and yard. Look for savings on things like asphalt sealant and drywall repair fabric to help you tackle the projects. If you already are trying to stay cool, Deal News says April is the time to check for discounts on window or portable air conditioners. You may find savings on Amazon, eBay, and Woot. And sneakers and athletic shoes may see significant markdowns in April as you get outside more. Brands such as Nike, Adidas, and Reebok all were discounted by as much as 50% last April. Watch for sales on gardening gear. Everything from garden hoses to pruners could be discounted to chains like Lowe's. And don't forget to shop early for Mother's Day gifts. It's not until May 12th, but plenty of sales are expected to start in April. Everything from jewelry to flowers should be marked down. Look for savings at retailers like Kohl's and Blue Nile and watch for promotions at Ulta as well. For more on where to find the deals, check out the full story at dealnews.com. All right, taking a look at our zoo cam, where it's always a great day to go to the San Antonio Zoo. And we got a shot of the flamingos here enjoying uh, April Fool's Day out there, Mark. Yes, so some preening going on here before Strutting. maybe we get a shower or a storm. <laughs> and again, to recap, class, uh, and you just asked this last week, Justin, yeah. again, what is the group of flamingos called? Yes. It is? A flamboyance. Yes, yes. yes. Mm. Mm. Got it. Yes. You I, more you know. Yeah, I think there's like a, a group of rhinos call, is called a crash. If yeah. I'm oh, that's mistaken. cool. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah right. some pretty interesting stuff there. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of different interesting names mm -hmm. for groups of animals. Flocks. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Groups. <laughs> uh, yes, flamboyance for the flamingos. Uh, we got to talk about the eclipse again. I, we, we brought this up earlier. We're seven days away. We're one week. The forecast, look, it's still too early to talk specifics because the models still have a lot of discrepancies seven days out, but I got to tell you, it's trending cloudier. We're not going to, we're not going to, you know, uh, get too negative yet because again, things could change, but it is trending in that direction. We can still see the eclipse with clouds, okay? It's not the uh, end of the world, but uh, we will, uh, it won't be as dramatic. We'll keep you posted. Things can change. Uh, let's talk about April climatology. There's a lot of ups and downs in April. April 1st, 78 is our average high. Our average low is 55. By April 30th, it's 83. And our average low is 62. This is also the fourth wettest month on average. Uh, so we tend to move to more of a, a rainy situation, spring-like situation. And that's what we're hoping for. We want the rain, just not necessarily the severe weather. The satellite picture shows a lot of clouds this morning. We're pretty much socked in at the moment. Now the question will be how much sun do we see today and where do those temperatures go? Uh, a lot of the indications are that temperatures will get very, very warm down to our south and west, but it is dependent on the clouds. And so it will require some clearing. I think we'll get some of that today, but not at the moment. 72 at the airport, 74 in New Braunfels, still in the 60s in the hill country, 66, the cool spot right now in Rock Springs, and right around 70 or so here in San Antonio. Here is the forecast high, 90. Uh, here in town, it is going to be a hot day once we get that southerly wind and again once we get some clearing. And yes, I do think there could be some triple digits on the map, especially as you get down towards Laredo, but even places like Carrizo Springs could jump up to 100 this afternoon. Here's the setup. We have an upper level low off to our west. This is creating showers and storms, snow in the higher elevations in New Mexico, some rain out ahead of it, and then lots of clouds uh, streaming in over Texas. That front that's associated with this storm system will push east by late this evening and uh, that's where it will help to create some severe weather. Now I think the bulk of it is going to be up across North Texas, Oklahoma, 
uh, parts of Arkansas and Missouri, but there will be a tail end of it that stretches down into our neck of the woods. And I think it's between 8 p.m. and midnight where we could see a couple of strong storms. Again, we're pretty far removed from the main energy of this system, but I think the threat is there. And as we look at the computer models, by 5 o'clock, not a lot there. But by 8 o'clock, we start to see some of these showers and storms blossom. And it's during that time frame where one or two of these could flare up into something stronger. By 2 a.m., these are pushing east and away from us, and then we get to clear out by tomorrow. And we'll see a lot of sun for Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, even Friday. The rest of the week's going to feature a lot of blue skies. Severe storm threat. If we do get severe weather, hail is top of the list. Uh, if we're going to see any uh, severe uh, issues, uh, winds will be next in line. Flooding and tornado are low-end risks. So here are our rain chances today. 6 o'clock, we start to bring them up a little bit, but it's that 8 to midnight period where we're going to have rain chances at their highest, and then they taper off after that. And, of course, we'll keep you posted. The KSET Weather App, a great tool. Uh, we can let you know if the storm's headed your way. 80 degrees tomorrow, 77 Wednesday. We've got some chilly mornings, 40s Wednesday and Thursday mornings. Uh, and then we start to moderate a little bit. The weekend looks a little more active, some drizzle perhaps on Saturday, maybe a few showers and storms on Sunday. Jury is still out on Monday. Still out on Monday. Again, the trends aren't looking great, but things can change. You know what? We're staying positive. We positive are. vibes, manifesting good things out there. We are. Keeping our fingers crossed. Yes. What else can we do to, That's right. to bring us some good luck exactly. here? Yeah. Justin, thank you. 951, 72 degrees. We will be right back. You'll notice a bigger emphasis on health around San Antonio this week. That's because it's National Public Health Week. Cities across the country are talking about ways to help people get healthier. In San Antonio, leaders want to make sure people have more access to fresh fruit and vegetables. Back in 2019, the city started the Healthy Corner Stores program, which brings fruit and veggies at a cheaper price to smaller stores in areas that are considered food deserts. Yeah, after the weekend I have, probably going to have to eat healthy <laughs> the rest of this week here. All right, one quick check of traffic before uh, we make our way out of the 9 o'clock here. 90 at Lackland, traffic moving pretty smooth both directions right there. 90 at Couples on the near west side, same situation there as well. Haven't seen too much volume that we usually see on a Monday morning, so if you need to head out, get some stuff done, then uh, right now might be a good time to do it because we are maybe anticipating some uh, weather coming through here. Right. Yeah, yeah, we are. Uh, it's still a little bit of lingering fog, by the way, in some of those shots. But yes, uh, this evening, uh, we're looking for a few storms to arrive somewhere between 8 p.m. and midnight. Uh, there could be a couple strong storms involved there, so that's something you want to keep a close eye on, and we'll certainly uh, keep you posted. Uh, up to 90 today, though, uh, there will be some warm temperatures on the map, and then we cool down a little bit tomorrow. Drier air settles in Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And then as we head towards the weekend, moisture returns, and that's when things get a little more complicated. So we'll get some rain chances on Sunday, and yeah, there are some indications we'll get some mm -hmm. rain on Monday too for the eclipse. Well, we know it's the forecast is murky for Monday, but we're going to proceed as if it's a go. Yeah, we will, and you'll still notice the eclipse. Like mm -hmm. I said, just because there's clouds, it's not mm -hmm. uh, it's not ruined. And also, I'll say it one more time. These models, seven days out, they can change. Things can change. Anybody's ball game. All right, guys, thank you very much for being with us. Happy birthday, Stephanie. She will be back here tomorrow.